हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द बायोलॉजी क्लास टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक डीएनए रेप्लिकेशन व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय रेप्लिकेशन रेप्लिकेशन इज द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ इट्स ओन कार्बन कॉपीज एंड डीएनए हैज दैट प्रॉपर्टी वॉटसन क्रिक इन नाइनटीन purposed that dna was semi conservative what is the meaning of semi conservative according to watson crick when the dna replicates means it forms its two daughter dnas as you can see over there from the parental strands we are having two newly synthesized dnas these newly synthesized dnas they are the carbon copy of the parent dna but one strand is parental and another strand is the newly synthesized strand and that newly synthesized strand is complementary to the parent dna means in replication in every generation of replication one strand is from the parent side and the another strand is newly synthesized this shows that the one strand is conserved and another strand is newly synthesized complementary to the parent strand so this property is known as the semi conservative property and that was given by that was proposed by watson crick the dna replication was semi conservative according to the scheme or according to this property the two parental strands separate and each strand that act as a template template means that strands against which the new strands will synthesize for synthesizing a complementary strand over it after the completion of replication each dna has one parental strand and one newly synthesized strand so one parental strand will conserve will carry from generation to generation so this property of replication in dna is known as semi conservative to prove that that the uh, dna is having the property of semi conservative the experiment proved for the semi conservative mode of dna replication was given by matthew melson and franklin stahl in 1958 and they performed the experiment on e coli to prove that the dna replication is semi conservative it is also known as the melson's and stahl experiment to prove that dna is semi conservative in nature and to prove that they grew e coli in the medium containing ammonium chloride where the nitrogen is heavy isotope of nitrogen means they are having the heavy isotope of nitrogen not radioactive so be careful you have to write heavy isotope of nitrogen for many generation till both the strands they should be of n15 and n15 so as a result n15 got incorporated into newly synthesized dna now this heavy dna can be differentiated from the normal dna which is of a light nitrogen that is normal ammonium chloride which is of 14 nitrogen by centrifugation in the cesium chloride which is known as the density gradient then they transfer the cell into the medium with normal ammonium chloride where the n is 14 instead of 15 and took the sample at the various definite time interval as the cell multiply so from 1 we will get two dnas from 2 we will get four from four we will get eight and so on the extracted dna was centrifuged and measured to get their density the extracted dna from the culture after every generation one generation that is n15 media 
given to N14 medium that is after 20 minutes. So one generation is of 20 minutes. Show the intermediate hybrid in which the one strand is of N15 and the another strand is of N14 and that is known as intermediate hybrid density. The DNA extracted from the culture after the two generation that is after 40 minutes shows the equal amount of light and the hybrid DNA and when to when allowed to grow for 80 minutes it shows more amount of the light DNA but the hybrid DNA still maintain itself that is two. Similar experiment was performed by the Taylor and the colleagues in 1958 on the Vesia Faber using the radioactive thymidine to detect the distribution of newly synthesized DNA in chromosomes to prove that DNA in the chromosome also replicate semi-conservatively. So in this diagram you can understand in a better way. So first we are having the N15 DNA in which both the strand is of N15 that is with the heavy isotopes and then we centrifuge it you will get the heavy isotope at the bottom. After first generation when this N15 DNA with the pure line DNA grow in the culture where we are having a normal ammonium chloride that is with N14 then you will get the hybrid varieties that is N15 and N14 the one strand is N15 and another strand is of N14 this is known as hybrid and again you can see in the centrifugation that is a little bit above than the bottom so that is not heavy that becomes hybrid now in the second generation means after 40 minutes you will get four DNAs in which two are of light DNA that both the strands are of N14 and N14 and the two are hybrid as that of a previous generation. So in this you will have a two bands one with the hybrid and another with the light. So with this it will continue for another generation that is the third generation if it is there you will get eight DNAs in which two are hybrid and the rest six they will be of a light. So that's why that is they will maintain the hybrid generation after generation that shows that the DNA is semi conservative in nature. Now after knowing that that is semi conservative in nature we should know the mechanism that how the replication takes place. So the enzyme which participates in the replication for the DNA that is various enzymes are there to catalyze during the DNA replication in the living cell where DNA replication takes place in the eukaryotes DNA replication takes place in the S phase of cell division that is of a cell cycle. And the enzymes which play the important role that is your DNA dependent DNA polymerase. This is the major enzymes which helps in the replication. It catalyzes the polymerization of deoxynucleotide and DNA template at the fast rate. Its average rate of polymerization is 2000 base pair per second. It completes the process of replication for E. coli within 38 minutes, which has only 4.6 into 10 to the to power 6, by whereas the human genome deployed content is 6.6 .6 into 10 to the to power 9 base pair. It also has to catalyze the reaction with a very high degree of accuracy as any mistake during the replication would result into the mutation. So the helicase that is your second enzyme it unwinds the DNA strand to form the replication fork and then we are having a DNA ligase. Along with that we are also having a few more enzymes which will be study in our mechanism. So first I will tell you how the replication takes place. 
you can see this dna double helical structure this double helical structure that is anti parallel to each other so at a very specific point for example this point this is known as origin of replication or you can say that is your uh, you can say that is ori that is the origin of replication then the both the strands they will get unwinded with the help of enzyme helicase but when they get unwinded they want to rewind to prevent that rewinding we just cut and then reseal at the same point to get the shape of replication fork so helicase topoisomerase which helps in breaking and resealing and then you will have a two template strands against which the new dna strands will synthesize and that is known as the dna replication now come step by step that how the replication takes place the process of replication begins at the unique and the fixed point that is called as origin of replication or ori the comp how it initiate the complementary strands of dna double helix are separated by the enzyme helicase this is called as unwinding of double strand of dna the separated strands they tend to rewind because they are complementary to each other therefore these are stabilized by the proteins called as a single strand binding proteins or there is the name of another one enzyme which break reseal and then they stabilize them that is the topo isomerase topo isomerase is the enzyme which helps to break and reseal it and the single stranded binding protein they helps to provide the stabilize that particular proteins which bind to separate the strands so unwinding of double stranded dna forms the y shaped configuration in the dna duplex which is called as the replication fork so here you can see this is the replication fork which is having that is 5 dash to 3 dash and this is your 3 dash to 5 dash that is anti parallel to each other they unwind with each other and now that gives a shape of a fork that is y shaped replication fork these two strands they are known as the template strand against which the new strand that is going to be synthesized so for the synthesis of the new strand so for the synthesis of the new strand an enzyme called as primase that initiate the replication of the strand oriented in the 5 3 dash towards the origin and 5 dash towards the fork direction this generate 10 to 60 nucleotides along the primer rna replicated in 5 dash to 3 dash so what does it means that is here whenever the new strand is going to be synthesized the polarity of that new strand is from 5 dash to 3 dash always fine so at the 3 dash end so this is the 3 dash end opposite to which we will have the primase over there and then with the help of primase the deoxynucleotide they are going to polymerize with this so that the new strand can be synthesized so the polarity of the new strand is always from 5 dash to 3 dash the free 3 dash oh of this rna primer they provide the initiating point for dna polymerase for the sequence addition of deoxyribonucleotides dna polymerase progressively adds deoxyribonucleotides to the free 3 dash end of the growing polynucleotide chain so that replication of 5 dash sorry the replication of 3 dash to 5 dash strand of the dna molecule is continuous and the growth of the new strand is 5 dash to 3 dash so this is the continuous strand 
and the growth of the new strand is from 5 dash to 3 dash. This is 5 dash to 3 dash against 3 dash to 5 dash. Fine. So, next they said that the replication of 3 dash to 5 dash strand is continuous. It is called as a leading strand while the replication of the second strand that is 5 dash to 3 dash of a DNA molecule is discontinuous and this is known as your lagging strand. Replication of the lagging strand generates small polynucleic fragments called as the Kokazaki fragments after R. Kokazaki who first identified them. So, these Kokazaki fragments then they are being joined together by another enzyme known as DNA ligase. So, when they are being joined with each other, so here you can see that is one is the continuous strand, fine, another is the discontinuous strand, they are having some fragments that is called as the Kokazaki fragments. Then they get joined with the help of the enzyme known as the DNA ligase. Then they separate from the parent and form the two newly synthesized DNA. And in newly synthesized DNA, which are the carbon copy of the parent DNA, the one strand is conserved from the parent and one is newly synthesized. And this also proves that DNA is semi-conservative in nature. Now, there is one more question that we are having the deoxynucleotides. So, that may be adenine, that may be guanine, that may be cytosine and thymine. And these play a very important role. One, they act as a substrate, fine, that is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And number two, they provide energy for polymerization reaction. As polymerization is energetically very expensive. The two terminal phosphates in deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate are high energy phosphate as in ATP. So, the question is what is the dual role of deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate? So, very commonly that example over there is ATP that it help act as a substrate because it will form a complement with the thymine and number two it is going to provide the energy. So, that helps in the polymerization. So, this is all about the semi-conservative nature experimentally proved. Along with that, we have explained the mechanism of DNA replication in which we are having the continuous strand as well as the discontinuous strands and the role of the various enzymes which participates in the DNA replication and the DNA replication takes place in the S phase of cell cycle of cell division. So, this is very important question. Please go through this, consult your NCRT. Till then, thank you.